guys, welcome to my YouTube channel at Or Two Wheels. Uh, this is my brand new Ducati Panigale V2 that I'm featuring here today. I just wanted to give you guys a quick walk around and show you why I purchased this bike. Uh, so I actually got this bike about three weeks ago and I haven't really been able to ride it much, about 65 miles on the clock so far. And the uh, reason being, it's actually winter time here in Colorado, so it's really cold. Can't really you know, use something like this very much. Um, obviously not on a track either. So, uh, you know, at least for the street use, um, haven't been able to really kind of get on it just yet. But I uh, made a quick list of stuff that I want to quickly go over with you guys um, about like why I even bought this bike, why you should maybe look into this bike. Um, so let's just get started. All right, so without a doubt, the number one reason why someone would buy this bike is obviously the looks. This is probably, in my opinion, one of if not the best looking motorcycles that you can buy right now uh, obviously the v4 is you know it looks even crazier it's wider it's got these crazy wings and stuff like this but the v2 is just timeless i mean it's, it's it doesn't have any of that crazy stuff on the sides those winglets uh, that's supposed to add like downforce it's just a smooth panel it's just drop dead beautiful and this red just pops in real life. I mean, I know um, they also make a the V2 with the white and red color scheme, but if you're gonna get a Ducati, you, you gotta go for this red. I mean, just look at the details on this. All right, so the next real reason why I got this bike over say something like the R1, the V4, the S1000RR, well, not only are those some of those bikes more expensive than this bike, but they're also really, really specific in where they're meant to be used. Uh, those are definitely track bikes that you know people can just go out and buy and it's it's kind of unfortunate that people will take something like that and use it on the street um i only say that it's because you can't really utilize everything that it has on the street i'm not saying you can with this thing either this thing is ridiculously fast um, but it's so much more approachable than some of those other bikes um, those other bikes can do eye-watering speed so quickly i mean this thing you know you can start at 100 miles per hour you're in that thing for maybe 10, 15 seconds and you're already at the top speed. So this thing, again, not a slouch, but compared to those other bikes, you know, definitely more tame, more of a mature option. Kind of going along with what I was talking about, you know, this bike, I use this primarily and also really any motorcycle to have fun with, guys. I don't really commute with my motorcycles. I don't really use them to go anywhere long distance either. Uh, there's really no point for me because if I need to go somewhere far, I'll take my car or I'll take something else, but I will not take a motorcycle to go far. It's just so impractical. The seats in here, this actually pops off. So does this, but in here, there's a little bit of storage. And when I say a little bit, I mean, Good luck getting a decent sized registration card in there. It's tough, guys. It's it's a really, really small bike. And I, you know, they did this on purpose. Like obviously you don't need saddle bags for this thing. Um, although I think that'd be pretty cool, but you know, not really the intended design here. And like, you know, in the Denver metro area where I live, um, it's it's mostly stoplight to stoplight traffic. And I know that's kind of what majority of um, people are kind of in cities are kind of dealing with. Uh, maybe if you li live out in the country or if you're kind of in a more wide open area, uh, you might be able to utilize a faster bike than this. But for me, for what I use it for, it's just there's no point in getting anything any quicker. Um, and I, I keep trying to justify how, you know, it's like slower or whatever. Guys, it's not slow. This thing does a quarter mile in something like 10 seconds, 10.2, 10.4 seconds. It's a really, really fast motorcycle. Um, but again, you're not gonna be able to tap into really half of what it has available on the street. All right, so enough talking about that. Um, I want to show you guys the TFT display real quick. What I love about this display is that it's it's really adaptive to based on like time of day. So for example, at nighttime, um, it'll kind of go to this darker layout, but during the day, um, it's actually this like this white background on black text, and it's just much easier to read. Um, so I'm glad that they thought of that. And actually it's funny, cause when you go underneath a bridge or something like that, it actually like switches around kind of neat um so basically there's also three modes on this thing so there's like there's street mode sport mode and race mode i keep mine on sport because honestly guys the street mode is kind of conservative on this bike it's significantly slower you can actually go into for example um, if you go into here you can actually start customizing what each one does so for me um, I, I leave the quick shifter on at all times. I don't know why anyone would turn that off. It's probably one of the sweetest features about this bike, but uh, sport mode and then race mode. Um, I keep mine on pretty, you know, conservative, conservative settings just because, again, guys, I'm not trying to do wheelies or do anything 
crazy, just trying to have fun without killing myself. So I keep it on relatively conservative settings, but I do have the full power unlocked on the sport and the race modes. Um, I haven't really tried out race mode just yet. Again, relatively new bike, still trying to, you know, break it in a little bit. Um, but I think I got it up to like 80 miles an hour, um, just kind of ripping it from 20 all the way to 80, uh, just jumping on the freeway. Um, I didn't redline or anything like that, but you know, super fun. It's plenty quick. You honestly wouldn't need much more than this. It's kind of getting into the menus here. You can actually use this button, kind of go up and down right here, just like this. Let me show you. So you like, let's exit for, for example, and then you want to hold this down and then it'll take you to this. So I, I'm going to switch it from street to sport real quick. You click it again and then you're in sport mode. And then again, if you hold it down, you can go into race mode, go up and then click it once more and it actually changes the color to kind of this red, which looks a little bit cooler. Um, and, it, and you know, it adjusts your settings just a little bit. So actually you can see that right there on this, on the side here, you can see my controls right there. You'll notice I keep mine on pretty conservative settings because definitely not trying to do wheelies or anything like this, uh, especially on a new bike. Um, oh, in general, actually, wheelies are kind of scary and obviously very dangerous. Um, so if you go back to the regular sport mode, you can see the settings have changed right there compared to race mode. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the menu system. You can actually also go, if you flip through here, you can go to settings menu, and then when you hold this down, you, instead of going into those modes, you actually go into the actual full settings. This is where you can change all sorts of stuff, like the lap, the backlight, the date and the clock, units, blah, blah, blah. Um, I actually saw that if you go into info, you can see like the battery voltage. So again, we're at 11.8. Um, I actually have, I think I showed you guys in the beginning of this, or here, I'll, I'll put it in here, but there's this really sweet little connector on here. I don't know the name exactly, but I'll put it in the description when I figure it out. But um, you basically plug in um, this guy right here. This plugs right into uh, this little device. And then the other, that side right here, this guy plugs into the the female clip in there and it actually starts charging your battery which is pretty sweet um, so I think it's dual purpose because the technicians can use it to kind of diagnose you know what's going on with the with the electronics on this thing but it also charges the battery which is sweet so you don't have to take you know this whole fender off to get to the battery which is right over here somewhere uh, you can just plug it in one of the coolest features I think I've ever seen on all right bike. so talking about that kind of leads me into my next thing which is like the controls on this bike so obviously you have a hydraulic clutch on this thing which is just like ridiculously smooth it, it feels so much better than the system I had on the Yamaha the MT-09 I had before this that one used a cable action this one's hydraulic and you can actually adjust it using this guy right here um, at first it was really finicky but once you figured out that you have to kind of push this up it becomes much easier so you push this up and then you can kind of adjust this using this guy right here oh, it's all wet but you get the point um, right here is your high beam setting so you can kind of turn on your high beams it'll kick it on um, and then again you can use this one to kind of go through the settings menu so I'm going down on that now and you can see it kind of flips through um, back here is your flash meter high beams so you can see it starts doing that right away um, obviously these are also adjustable right here you can just use a, like a quarter or something like that to adjust these just be kind of careful how you do this um, I haven't really messed with mine just yet um, I think before I start really dialing into this, I'll probably get with some suspension guys at the Ducati uh, dealership and just kind of ask them what um, you know best settings are for the street. Uh, but honestly, how they are set up right now, it's really comfortable. Going over a bump on this motorcycle, it's you know it's sprung really well, so it doesn't necessarily jolt you up and down. Um, and if it does, it rebounds like in a way that's very controllable, which I, I think is really nice. Um, and also the seat is super comfortable. Uh, right now it's unplugged, right? Or, you know, I took the seat off right there, but um, super duper comfortable seat as well. Um, so if you kind of go back over here, show you the rest of the controls on this side. So this is obviously what you use to turn on the bike. Right now it's off. Um, you can go down to here and then turn it on that way. This is your regular headlights there. You can start turning on and off. Um, let me show you that real quick. Actually, I think the bike actually has to be on before the headlights will come on, and then obviously only one of them will come on, but then if you turn the high beam on, the, both of them come on. So it's like a pretty normal normal thing in the motorcycle world. Um, the brakes are Brembo brakes, so you can see that here. 
throw in a couple pictures of that too. I think these are a two piston caliper, but don't quote me on that just yet. I'm not sure exactly, but if I figure it out, I'll put it in the description of the video. Um, kind of going up from that though, the brakes, you know, um, I have to say I'm pretty impressed. The, the initial bite isn't like the best in the world, but as you start leaning into it, it's so progressive that it almost makes up for the fact that it's not an immediate, you know, like oomph. Um, which I guess it can be good in certain ways too. And this is also adjustable right here. You again, you push this out and then you can start adjusting it. Um, so it's pretty straightforward to use actually. All right, so the next few things are obviously the um, controls right here for the turn signals. Um, these are super easy to use. You just flip this back and forth and you can tell it's already turning on. It actually uses that little thing right there. Eventually, I'm probably gonna get some delete for this because this is so obnoxious and it vibrates like crazy. So you can't really use the mirror all that much. Um, it's not great. Uh, you then, when you wanna cancel it, you just kind of push this in and that cancels it. Um, you've got a couple more settings here that you can mess around with the suspension right here on the back. Um, it's not the Olin system at all. Uh, I know the V2 Bayless edition has Olin's upgraded suspension. Uh, this one's just a standard system. It's still really good though. Again, not a track bike, not a full-fledged track bike. So I don't necessarily miss that function at all. Um, another thing I think I'm gonna eventually do is get rid of these foot pegs for the passenger. Um, <laughs> there's no way anyone's gonna be sitting here ever. So it's kind of just extra weight and kind of ugly in my opinion. So it is what it is. Um, actually, while we're down here, the exhaust is right here. Um, I really do not like this setup at all. It gets incredibly hot and you can see it's, there's insulation right here, but guys, it's it's like a little tin foil. It, I mean, not really, but you know, it's really thin. It doesn't really help. It gets really hot on the seat very quickly. Um, it's not a very comfortable place to be at all. Um, and then back here, uh, of course you got the chain. It comes with this like chain wax stuff that comes from the factory. Not a big fan of it. It kind of just splatters everywhere. Uh, I wish they used something else instead of this. I'm sure they have their reasons to do so, but um, the first chance I get, you know, in the first couple hundred miles, I'm probably gonna really scrub that off and use my own stuff. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show on this bike is the exhaust. So this is a bone stock car, uh, excuse me, bone stock motorcycle, so there's not much going on, but uh, this stock exhaust is really loud, actually. So when you first get on it, uh, do a cold start and everything like that, you'd be, you're gonna be pretty pleasantly surprised at how loud it is. Um, I don't really see a point in making it any louder. I know they make already some external, uh, or excuse me, third party um, exhaust systems, but I don't think I'm gonna get this on this bike. Um, I, I, just, I just love how compact this looks and the sound is really good. Good. Um, so honestly, I don't, I don't really see the point. Um, and while we're back here, I'm going to show the wheels as well. Um, they're wrapped in these Corsa, uh, Rosso Corsa wheels. Um, they're super grippy. Obviously, I haven't been able to really utilize everything on this yet. It's still breaking in at the moment, but uh, I can already tell it's a very sticky compound. Um, and so no, no real problems there. Um, it's got a couple of wheel weights just kind of to balance the wheel out right there. A little center lock here. Well, it's, it's, it looks like a center lock, but it's not. Um, but it looks really sweet. Kind of like reminds me of uh, race cars. Like I know the Lamborghini has, like the Huracan Performante or whatever has these really sweet center locking wheels. Um, or, and also I think Porsche also has some of these too. Look pretty sweet. Um, gosh, yeah, I think that's about it on this bike. I mean, I have not much else to show. Obviously, you got the oil stuff here, the end, uh, it's gonna be the clutch uh, cover there, um, the radiators down here. I think eventually it's uh, probably a good idea to get a cover for this because I don't wanna get rock chips right into there. That would really suck because that's actually a pretty flimsy material that they use. Um, when I say flimsy, I mean, you know, you can very quickly damage it just with rock chips. So definitely a good idea. The other thing I think I'm gonna do for this bike eventually is get some sort of paint protection on it. Um, obviously, you know, it's not like a car where you can just slap on paint protection film. Um, I guess you could, but you know, I'm gonna have to see if that's even possible because I don't want this thing scratched up, but I really don't like how those tank grips look, especially on a beautiful bike like this. I definitely don't wanna slap that on there. 
All right, guys, well, there you have it. That is my Ducati Panigale V2. That's a 2023. Uh, I can't wait to make more content with this thing. Um, please let me know if you what you would like to see next on this bike. Um, just comment it below. Um, I'm planning on getting a helmet set up eventually uh, so that I can kind of have like riding videos where I can actually talk to you guys and stuff. Uh, but for now, just wanted to do a quick walk around. Um, obviously, this being my first video on YouTube too, um, pretty special, um, you know, pretty sweet bike to feature. And yeah, um, and on the subject of the YouTube channel too, I've got some other pretty fun things as well, like the M4. Uh, this is a F83 M4. This thing is so much fun, you guys. I'll, I'll make videos on this too. It's obviously a convertible, so it's F83. So F82 is the coupe. This is the convertible. Um, say what you will. I mean, obviously it's more weight um, because it's the hardtop convertible. Um, but that's for another time. And then yes, I also have a Tesla Model 3 as well. Let me show you that real quick. This, this, I love this thing. It's my, obviously it's my get to work and back car, but it's very quickly become one of my favorite cars I've ever owned. So anyways, enough of that. Thank you again for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.